I'd like to say good morning to everyone. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. We're so grateful to God to have all of you present with us this morning. Uh, amen. We are uh, so grateful to God to have our pastor emeritus uh, and Sister Florida Walker with us. Amen. Uh, now, I want you all to know that uh, Pastor Emeritus is not feeling well. Uh, uh, had he been feeling better, he would have been up opening us up this morning. Amen? Amen. But we're just so grateful to God to have him uh, uh, and First Lady Florida Walk to come and be with us uh, on this morning, as with all of you. Uh, and we greet, amen. You all just uh, give yourselves a hand this morning. And we greet all of our brothers and our sisters that's worshiping with us online. Uh, our virtual worshipers uh, uh, and we do this that if you're in the area if you're close by we ask that you will come and be a part of in-person worship uh, amen amen we, we we encourage you to come uh, and let me say this before I go any further I want to encourage parents I want to encourage the parents make sure that you uh, uh, teach your children the relevance of church Amen. Just how important church is. We want to, uh, you want to raise that child up in church because they're going to grow up one day. Amen. And, and when they grow up, they're going to uh, encounter some things that uh, uh, Brother Ken K said it this morning that uh, 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 their bank account can't get them out of it. Amen. Amen. Uh, 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 that uh, where the neighborhood that they stay in, the, uh, the mayor that they have, they can't get them out of it. So they need to develop a, a, a relationship with the Lord in their youth. Amen. I think they say it in the book of Ecclesiastes. Remember thy, uh, thy creator in the days of thy youth. Amen. So I want to encourage parents, make sure that you bring your children up in church and teach them the, uh, the importance of church and, and, and getting to know the Lord. All right? Uh, amen. Amen. So, uh, uh, we encourage you to do that for us. It's now time for us to begin our morning worship service. We ask everyone to stand for call to worship. Uh, the brothers that's on, I ask that you all come to the mic at this time. The brother that's on for devotion, uh, you can come to the mic at this time. Uh, the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent before him. Amen. We ask that you remain standing for our opening song, Pass Me Not. We'll be led by the praise team. Allow me another chance. 
because I realized that it could have been the other way. But I realized this morning that you blessed me over and over again. You have allowed me to trace my tracks, to come back out to the house of worship one more time. I thank you. I thank you for working me. I thank you for the family that you have given me. I thank you for all what you have done in my life. But now I ask this morning to look over the congregation that if you find anything that should be, I ask this morning that you will remove it and that you will strengthen us where we are weak at, build us up where we are torn down, that we might be able to stand the wise of the devil. Heavenly Father, I know that Satan was on our trail trying to turn us around, trying to destroy. But you said in your word that we ever need you. You said that we could call upon you. We need you this morning. We need you in our home. We need you in our hearts. And we need you each and every day of our lives. We can't make this journey without you. Please, sir, have mercy upon us. Because we realize your grace and your mercy have brought us up to this time point in place. We ask that you would look over the, the bereaved family. We ask that you would look over the sick today. We ask that you would look over the one that don't know you in the part of their sin. Heavenly Father, I realize that they need a savior today. So I ask that you would touch in a mighty way. Please I have mercy today. Heavenly Father, we ask that you will walk with us and talk with us. Yes. Hold our hand, Heavenly Father, so one can't fall without the other. We pray that you will bless those who have went to the grave site, yes. some who is on their way. We pray this morning for my brothers and my yes. sister today, yes. wherever they desire, Heavenly Father. But I know that some of them don't know you today in the part of their sin. So I ask that you would visit them today, Heavenly Father. Only you can do it. We pray for this church member today. We pray for this body today. That it would be what you want it to be. And we pray for the preach word that he will go forward. And somebody will receive it and say, what must I do to be saved? Have mercy today. And when it's all said and done, we ask for a peace, power, and death. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. And all of God's people said amen. 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 It's just good to be able to come back to church one more time. Amen. We're so uh, grateful to God to see all of you uh, present this morning. Uh, we're especially grateful to God to see uh, Brother Curtis. Amen. That's coming in. Amen. He's been in the hospital, but God has delivered him. God has brought him uh, back. Amen. Uh, with some uh, some more that's been out, that's been sick. We're just so grateful to God to have all of you uh, present this morning. And as we have already forestated, we're uh, so grateful to God to have those that's uh, uh, worshiping with us virtually. We, we, we thank and we praise God uh, for you. Uh, we have a few observations, but before we do that, uh, uh, it's offering time. Amen. It's time for an offering. Amen. God has blessed us. Uh, if God has blessed you with something to give, you ought to be a cheerful giver. Amen. The Bible teaches us that God loves a cheerful giver. Uh, and the Bible also teaches us that it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. Uh, and we just thank God for the opportunity to give. We have provided three ways that you can give. You can give on your way in or on your way out. Uh, and the uh, uh, envelope box that's in the foyer or to one of the brothers in the parking lot or, or you can uh, mail your, your your gifts to P.O. Box 1237 Canton, Mississippi 39046 or you can go to our uh, website and you can click on Givelify and you can give via Givelify. Uh, amen. I know that is the most uh, convenient way for us uh, uh, for the millennials uh, but uh, you can use it as well. Uh, but if you desire to bring it, it's your choice. We would love for you to 
uh, do uh, what's most convenient for you. Amen? Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to say thank you. We thank you, Father God, for another opportunity to give. Father God, for we realize that it is in our giving, in our cheerful willingness of giving, that we look more like you. Father God, we pray that uh, you would touch the hearts of those that haven't given yet. Father God, that you move on them in such a way and let them know that our love is predicated upon our giving. For you said in your word that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You said in your word, uh, uh, but God commended his love towards us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You said in your word that greater love have no man than this, that a man will lay down his life for a friend. Father God, we pray that you move on hearts this morning, that we'll strive to look more like you in our giving. These and other blessings, we ask your darling son, Jesus' name, amen. 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 Uh, a few observations this morning. Uh, we will, uh, on this Saturday at 11 o'clock, uh, we will have the funeral service for one of our members, uh, uh, Brother William Stewart. Amen. Uh, uh, Brother William Stewart, he's been uh, down for some time. Uh, amen. The husband of uh, Miss Clara Stewart. Uh, we're asking all of our members, amen, to please come and support uh, this family. Uh, we're asking that uh, those ministries that uh, do what you do on, on, uh, for funerals, uh, audio, uh, ushers, and uh, all of those, we, we're asking that you will be present, uh, that we'll be here for uh, this family, all right? Amen. It's them today, uh, and it can be us this afternoon. Uh, so let, let us be there for them. Let us keep them in our thoughts and in our prayers. Not just this family, but uh, there are several families that's uh, going through. Uh, amen. Uh, I just learned of uh, Brother uh, Junior Meeks. Uh, his, uh, Clarence uh, Junior Meeks, his wife is in the hospital. Amen. Uh, she's not doing the best. We ask that you would pray for him and his family. Uh, amen. And there are those that have lost loved ones recently. Let us continue to pray for them, all right? Um, this Tuesday, this Tuesday, amen, uh, June the 7th is Election Day. Uh, we want to encourage you, please, ma'am, please, sir, get out and exercise your right to vote, all right? Uh, amen. It, get out and exercise your right to vote. Uh, because uh, that's the voice that we have, but when you don't vote, you don't have a voice. And when you don't vote, you really don't have a right to complain. Because uh, uh, somebody said silence give consent. If you're silent to what's going on, that means you must be okay with it. If, if something is not right, uh, whether with your city, with your mayor, with your alderman, when the time comes to vote, vote them out. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, and I'll let you know my thoughts on all of that uh, when we get closer to that time, all right? Amen. Uh, also, Juneteenth uh, celebration. Uh, the deadline for ordering T-shirts has been extended to the day. Uh, today is the last day that you can get your T-shirts. Um, the ladies, uh, if you're here, let me ask uh, the ladies uh, to stand. I know it's Miss Tiffany Dixon, uh, Miss Virgie uh, Smith, Miss Keela uh, uh, Meeks Watkins, and Ms. Laverne Watts. You can see either one of those, these ladies on uh, today after service and you can order your uh, Juneteenth celebration uh, t-shirt, all right? Hey, Amen, you may be seated. And uh, the uh, celebration will be held on June the 18th. That's that Saturday. I know June uh, 10th is June the 19th, but that's on a Sunday, Father's Day. Uh, the celebration will be held on Hickory Street. Uh, the uh, uh, registration for the participants for the walkers, the one that's going to be walking uh, our teams, uh, you need to be there at 6.30, all right? Uh, the, the walk will begin at 7.30. Uh, the brothers will have tents set up. We ask that you will bring your lawn chairs. Uh, they will have tents uh, set up. We will have coolers with uh, ice, uh, water, and Gatorade in it, all right? So uh, come on and be a part, and there's going to be a gift given to the church that has the most uh, 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 spirit or uh, 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 the greatest participants. So uh, I don't know where we're gonna put our trophy, Miss Katie, but uh, once we win it, 
We're going to put it somewhere. All right. We want to let them know that we're loud and we're proud and we're uh, New Bethel. All right. So come on out and, and, and uh, enjoy and, and, and join in with the festivities on that day. And let's come out and support our, our, our runners. Amen. Our walkers. Amen. Our walkers. Amen. I don't want to scare our, our teams away thinking that they have to run, but it's, it's, it's a 5K walk, I think. And, it's, and they'll be walking in some of the historic uh, parts of Kent. So let's come and let's support them, all right? And let's wait for them at the finishing line. How about that? Amen. Now on uh, next Sunday, amen, that's going to be a big day here at New Bethel because we're going to have lunch with the ladies. Amen. I knew I'd get some amens off of that one. Amen. We're going to have lunch with the ladies, but I ask that if you would, make sure that you put your name on the sign-up list that we'll know how many uh, we're, uh, we're looking to feed on next Sunday. Uh, the sign-up list is in the foyer of the church, so on your way out, make sure you sign that uh, uh, sign-up list. Uh, and we're going to come, and we got some brothers. They, uh, they're ready. They're ready to do some serving. Amen. Amen. One thing we know how to do is serve. Amen. So uh, the brothers here at New Bethel, we, we have some brothers. They are already on standby, and they're ready to do some serving. So uh, ladies, we're looking forward to having a nice time with you all on next week. So uh, come and let's, let's break bread together, all right? Amen. God bless you. May God keep you at this time. Amen. At this time, it gives me an, an honor. Amen. Uh, to present to you our praise team that's coming back to us. Amen. Amen. It, it, it's been a long time coming, but they are here and they are ready. Amen. Amen. We will hear from them now.
be in the service. Amen. One more time. If you're not glad, let me drop this on you. You do know that he didn't have to let you live to be in the service one more time. Amen. So I don't know about you, but I'm glad to be in the service one more time. Uh, have you ever been in a position where you wanted to be in church and you couldn't get there? Amen. I, I don't know about you, but at, at the beginning of the pandemic, hey amen, uh, uh, I, I, I'll preach anywhere. Hey amen. But it, it was kind of strange preaching from my office at home. Uh, and, and I just longed for the chance to get back to church. Amen. amen. And so much so. And so I told Pastor uh, Emeritus, I said, look, I'm going out to the church and do, the, do my sermon. Uh, and he said, well, uh, what about, I told him, I just got to be at church. It's just something about coming to church. Amen. I, I know, I know, I hear the pundits out there saying, look, you can praise God anywhere. you exactly right. But it just seemed like it's something about when I come to church. Uh, I, I can agree with the Psalms is when they say, I was glad when they said unto me. Can I put it in today's uh, vernacular? When I was glad when they said unto me, come, let us go to church. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't know about you, but I'm glad to be at church one more time. Uh, amen. Let's, let's show some love for our praise team. Amen. We thank God for our minister of music. Amen. Uh, uh, Brother Charles C. Taylor, along with the music department, Brother Kincaid on the drums. And we just thank God for, again, for Pastor Emeritus uh, J.P. Walker, First Lady Florida Walker, and to all of you, hey amen, we're just so grateful to God to have you present with us uh, this morning. We realized that you could have stayed at home. You could have gone somewhere else, but you were obedient to the Spirit, and uh, you're here this morning. We thank God for you. I give honor to uh, my lovely wife that's still recovering. Uh, we thank God for your prayers. We ask that you continue to pray for her. Amen. Uh, hopefully she'll uh, uh, be with us on uh, next Sunday. But we thank God for her as well that's worshiping with us virtually. Uh, amen. And that's the good thing about uh, uh, Facebook, that members that's out sick. Amen. Uh, or we have members that's in other states uh, on vacation. They still can worship with us. Amen. So that's a blessing within its, itself. I, 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 I want to say this. I said earlier about encouraging. Uh, I was encouraging our parents. Make sure you bring your uh, children to church. But uh, I, I, I just want to acknowledge those that have their children here today. Amen. Amen. We, we see all of these lovely babies out there and these uh, young people. We just thank God for, for you all. Amen. And I, I'll say this, that 
Uh, it was during the pandemic. We had some babies to be born here at New Bethel. Amen. Uh, amen. And I want you to know that we are uh, uh, doing baby dedication uh, services. Amen. Every quarter we do uh, a baby uh, dedication service on the third Sunday. And we have one coming up in July. Uh, if you have a, a, a baby that you want to be dedicated, I encourage you to go on the website. The form is there. Fill the form out. Email it to us so we can... Uh, try to get your baby on for July, but if not July, uh, the next time, uh, I think, is in October. Amen. So we're, we're looking. Uh, we want to dedicate these babies to the Lord because uh, in a few years, we're going to have them in their Sunday school class, and they're going to move, and they're going to be in the children and the youth choir. Look, we want to just make sure that we get them uh, 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 saturated with the Word of God and with God in their lives, all right? Amen. Amen. We're looking, we're looking. We may not do it this year, but uh, we're definitely looking at having our vacation Bible school on next year. But I will say this, that we will have youth day this year. Amen. We're going to have youth day this year. All right. And we're going to put our babies on display. All right. Amen. Uh, there is a word from the Lord on this morning and is found in the gospel as recorded by St. Mark. Amen. The gospel as recorded by St. Mark, the fifth chapter. The gospel as recorded by St. Mark, the fifth chapter. I'm going to look at verse 15 through verse 20. They come to Jesus and see him that was left with the devil had believed him, sitting and clothed and in his right mind. And they were and they got sold and told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil. Also concerning the swine. And they began to pray him to depart out of their coast. When he was come into the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. Howbeit Jesus suffered him not, said unto him, Go home. To thy friends, and tell them how great things the Lord have done for thee, and have had compassion on thee. And he departed and began to publish in Decapolis how great things Jesus had done for him, and all men did marvel. Thus, in the reading of the word of God, may God add a blessing to the readers, the hearers, and most of all the doers of his holy and divine word. I'd like to use for a thought on this morning, just for a little while, something worth telling. Amen. Something worth telling. We're in a day and time now where we've been blessed. We have a plethora of tools that we can use to tell what we want to tell. We can tell as many people as we desire. And we can tell as much as our heart desires. I guess you could say that we're living in a, a tell-all society. Because you can see them face to face and tell them by word of mouth. You can grab your phone and you can text them a message. You can write a, yeah, you still can write a letter. You can email them. You can message them on Facebook. You can e uh, uh, email them. and uh, You can even call them on the telephone and tell them what you want to tell them. Yeah. And, and, and so we're living in a tell-all society. And I found out, uh, Pastor, that uh, you, you do have a lot of people that are telling this morning. Amen. But uh, am I afraid that a lot of things that they're telling one really worth telling. Amen. Yeah, Brother Kincaid, they tell, they tell uh, uh, what you did, where you did it, how you did it, how long you did it, and if you stop, they may tell if you stop. They tell who, you're, uh, who they're with, they tell who you're with, how long you've been with them, when you got with them, and they'll even tell when you left them. They'll tell what they have, they'll tell what you have, they'll tell how long you had it, where you got it from, how long you kept it, and when you lost it. Yeah. We're living in a tell-all society, but uh, I'm afraid that a lot of those things aren't 
really worth telling. Somebody say, well, pastor, I, 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 I hear you thinking. I hear you thinking. Someone is saying, well, pastor, how do I distinguish between that which is worth telling and that which is not worth telling? I'm glad you asked the question. Here's how you, uh, you distinguish the two. That which is not worth telling, it benefits no one. That which is not worth telling, it benefits no one. It doesn't benefit me to know what you have, how you got it, where, uh, how long you had it, when you lost it. It doesn't benefit me to know who you're with, how long you've been with them, and when you left them. It doesn't benefit me. Well then, Pastor, you told us the difference. Now tell us what's really worth telling. You ought to tell of the goodness of Jesus. Now that's worth telling. You, 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 you ought to tell about his goodness. Tell about his grace. Tell about his mercy. Tell about his love. Tell about his forgiveness. Tell about how kind he is. Tell, tell, tell them about what he has done for you. Yeah, because I, I, I found out a long time ago, nobody can tell it. Yeah, yeah, you ought to help me preach this thing this morning. Nobody can tell it like I can tell it. What the Lord has done for me. Yeah, that, that's, that's worth telling. And, and, and the reason it's worth telling because it's beneficial. How, how, how so, Walker? How is it beneficial? Because you got somebody out there. They need some hope. They, 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 they need some hope. They're thinking that they can't go on. But if you tell them that I was at a point where I thought I couldn't go on, but Jesus, yeah, eh, eh, there's somebody out there that, that they're contemplating suicide, but they need to know because some of you are, or, or some of you watching may have been in the same predicament. And you know for yourself that one day he turned that thing around for me. You ought to tell somebody. I, I, I can't understand, Pastor, that uh, we, we as a church, we as believers, we're so busy telling that which is not worth telling. And we're so quiet on the things that's worth telling. Look, uh, there's a song they used to sing around here some years ago. That's what's wrong with the church. Yeah, they sitting quiet and still, acting like they don't know what the Holy Spirit is. Yeah, yeah, well, uh, it's time for the church to make some noise. Yeah, the world is making noise, but when, when are we, the church, are going to make some noise? Now, now I know we're celebrating Juneteenth this month, but you do know what else they're celebrating this month, don't you? They call it Pride Month. But I want you to know that pride is not in the LGBTQ uh, community. But pride comes in by knowing who Jesus is. So I want you to know that if you know him, you ought to be proud and you ought to be loud with it. Yeah, we need to understand that uh, if it's contrary to the word of God, that's nothing to be proud about. But if it's in line with the word of God. And look, look, I, I, I'm not bashing anyone. We're to love everyone. As a matter of fact, you ought to tell them that God can change them. If they want to know how can he change me, I was born this way. You ought to tell them I was born wrong too. I was born in sin. I was shaping in iniquity. But one day, I don't know your day, but if I was telling them, if I'm telling them right now, I tell them it was one Monday evening that I came to Jesus. Just as I was, I was weary, I was wounded, and I was sad. But I found in him, in other words, he changed my life. He changed it for the, the better. Yeah, yeah I, I didn't mean to go that far. That's just my introduction. But uh, as I look at our text this morning, uh, I, see, I see that this man, he was proud, and yes, he was loud. We're telling what the Lord had done for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was loud with it. He, 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 he didn't hold his peace. But he was willing to share. He was willing to tell everyone around him what the Lord had done for him. 
you Bible scholars, you, you Bible readers, you know this story. I, I already know you know this particular story. And the story is that uh, this man, some uh, uh, refer to him as a lunatic. Some refer to him as a madman. Uh, others refer to him as the crazy man in the cemetery. But it was this man that was in the cemetery. Some would even say that he was mentally deranged. But the Bible say that he was possessed with demons. He was possessed with demons. He was up there in the cemetery day and night uh, uh, screaming, hollering, and crying out. He was cutting himself. Uh, couldn't keep clothes on himself. They tried chaining him. They tried tame, taming him. They couldn't tame nor chain him. Yeah, because when they put the iron fetters on him, he would break them. When they put the chains on him, he would break them. They put cables on him, he would break them. But one day, Jesus showed up on his coast. The text goes on to say that uh, he ran. He ran to meet Jesus. And he worshiped Jesus. Yes, he worshiped Jesus, but then that, that demon on the inside, you know how it is. Uh, Paul said it like this, every time I desire to do good, evil is always there pressing. Yeah, when, when, when he began to worship the Lord, the demon began to stir up in him. Verse 7, it said that, uh, he says to Jesus, uh, thou son of the most high God, I adjure thee uh, by God that thou torment me not. Because the thing is, Jesus had told that spirit, come out of him. Uh, 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 come out of him, you unclean spirit. Yeah. And then Jesus asked him a question and said, what is your name? And uh, the demons uh, said that, uh, my name is Legion, for we are many. Yeah, Psalm said it was 600 or more uh, uh, demons in this man. So uh, our name is Legion because we are many. And then uh, they asked Jesus for permission. They asked Jesus for permission, said to him, look, uh, whatever you do, don't send us out of the country. Yeah. But they asked for permission and say, there's a herd of swine over there. There are some pigs over there. Uh, 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 allow us to go into the, the pigs. Uh -huh. Jesus gave them permission. They, they went into the pigs and here's how uh, destructive uh, Satan is when they got in the, uh, the pigs. Said the pigs ran down a steep slope into the sea and drowned themselves. Uh, and it said those that fed the, the pigs, that's when they started telling. Yeah, they, 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 they said that they went into town. If you will, if you will, uh, use your imagination with me this morning and let's listen in on the conversation. They go into town and they go to the, the men in town and here's how the conversation went. If you would allow me, allow me to call uh, the man uh, uh, that had been possessed. Let's call him Leroy. They, 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 they went into town and they, they say, you all remember Leroy, don't you? Yeah, yeah, the one that's in the cemetery. The one that's uh, with no clothes on. The one that screams and holler and cry out day and night. The one that's up there, the crazy man, the, the madman, the lunatic. The one that's up there cutting himself. Yeah, we remember him. They said, well, 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 he's no longer like that. There's a man named Jesus. He came and called the demons out of him. Now Leroy is sitting down. Leroy has clothes on. Leroy is in his right mind. He's no longer cutting himself. He's no longer screaming, hollering, and crying out. Can I give you the expression how, how they accept the news? They was just like this. Didn't say a mumbly word, Miss Katie. Leroy that had been up there all of those years, cutting himself, screaming, hollering, going through all of that torment. He tells them that Leroy has been delivered and they received the news like this. But he wasn't through telling. He wasn't through telling because the text said he told him about Leroy, but then he told him about the pigs. He says about the pigs, he say, uh, this Jesus, he called the demons out of Leroy. Yeah. Sent them into the pigs. And the pigs ran down this steep hill. 
ran into the sea and drowned themselves. Can I give you the expression now? Get ready, get ready. It's going to throw you. I can hear somebody say, say what? You mean to tell me all of that bacon, all of those ribs, all of that ham, all of those chitlins, all of those pig feet, hog ears, hog malt, all of that gone now. Brother Blair, I can hear, I, I can hear what I'm saying. Hand me my shoes. Give me my coat because we got to go down and address this issue. Uh, bro, Brother Elton, that messed me up because I see, I see the people in town. They were more concerned about pigs than they were about a person. They were more concerned about a delicious meal more than they were about a delivered man. Yeah, yeah. They were more concerned about their stomachs than they were about a soul. And, and it's sad in my heart today to let you know that some people concern themselves with the wrong thing. Some people are more concerned about stuff and things than they are about people. Than they are about souls. Some people are more concerned about a dollar than they are about a soul. Mm. But here's how Jesus view a soul. He said, what profit a man to gain the whole world? He compares the whole world to one soul. What profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Yeah, that's how they reacted. That's how they reacted. And they came to Jesus. When they got to Jesus, they, uh, let me put it in today's vernacular. They say, uh, get your grip and get on your ship and get up out of here. And you know what Jesus did? He got his grip, got on the ship, and he was getting ready to get up out of there. Yeah. But before he could undock the ship, said that the man that had been delivered, he showed up. Look at Leroy. Leroy shows up and said, look, I want to go with you. Because, see, around here, nobody could help me. Nobody would help me. And, and look, I want to go with you. They, they, they only lied at me. They talked about me. They had their children afraid of me. I want to go with you. Let me ride with you, Jesus. Watch what Jesus tells them. He tells Leroy, look, uh, you can't do me any good on the ship with me. But there's some more people around here. They need to know about me. First thing I notice, I'll give you three points and we get out of here this morning. The first thing I notice, I notice the mandate from the master. The mandate, the, the command, the order, the instruction that Jesus gave them. Jesus told them to go back home to your friends. Another version put it like this, go back to your own people. In other words, go back to the ones that knew you before the change. See, see my brothers and sisters, uh, they need to see you. Because somebody say a picture is worth a thousand words. Somebody else say that seeing is believing. Somebody got to see it for themselves. Yeah. Jesus told them go back home. And uh, because he knew that uh, those people home, they knew Leroy when he was out of his mind. And when they, once they saw him, they were going to know that a change had occurred in Leroy. Yes, and that's what the Lord is telling somebody this morning. Yeah, the mandate from the master heals. You need to go back to the ones that knew you when you was a drunk. Uh, because they need to see the change. You need to go back to the ones that knew you when you were an addict. Because you're clean now. You need to go back to the ones that you hung out with when you ran the streets. Because they need to know that there has been a change in your life. And they're going to want to know. They're going to want to know uh, what happened to you. I remember when. You know you got some out there like that, don't you? Somebody say, yeah, pastor, that's my family. They say, I remember when, when, when we were the first in the club. And we could have locked the doors on the club. They, they'll tell you that, look, we used to get ours and uh, we used to share and pass the bottle around. they tell you that I remember when. But it's something different about you now. Here's the thing. Not only 
Do I see, see the mandate from the master? The master knew that they was going to want to know. And the master said, look, don't leave them wondering. Don't leave them pondering. So second of all, I see a message from the master. So look, don't leave them wondering, but tell them what happened. Tell them that I met a man named Jesus. So I no longer need the alcohol. I met a man named Jesus. I no longer need to live that promiscuous lifestyle. Yes, I met a man named Jesus. Jesus gives him the message. So you go home to those that know you. And tell them the great things that the Lord has done for you. And have had compassion on you. I, 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 I remember Brother Taylor when I was growing up that uh, one of my mom's favorite verse. We used to uh, uh, eat breakfast on Sunday morning. Daddy would pray and we would go around the table and all of us would quote a scripture. Yeah. Miss Katie, my mom would uh, quote uh, Psalms 126 verse 3. The Lord have done great things for us. Well, uh, are we glad? Yeah, 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 yeah. You ought to tell somebody what the Lord has done in your life. Jesus said, look, don't go there and just let them see you, but let them hear you. Tell them the great things that the Lord has done. How I called demons out of you. Tell them how I, I delivered you from your, your struggles. Tell them, you need to tell somebody this morning. Pastor, I, I, I can't understand. I can't understand uh, how dare, how dare some of them have the unmitigated goal to keep your mouth quiet and closed and silent and not tell somebody about the one who rocked you to sleep last night. How dare you not tell somebody about the one that watched over you all night long while you slumbered and slept. How dare you not tell somebody about the one who woke you this morning, clothed you in your right mind, gave you the activities of your limb, put food on the table, clothes on your back, shoes on your feet. How dare you not tell somebody? Yes, Jesus told them, I got to close now. Jesus told them, look, go back and give them this message. I see the mandate from the master. I see the message from the master. Thirdly and finally, I see the motivation from the man. Yes, this man was motivated. It's in the text, unless you think I'm making all of it up. Jesus told him, look, go home to your friends. Go home and tell them what I've done. But the next verse say, he departed and began to publish or proclaim in the capitalist. Yeah, what the Lord had done for him. Jesus told him to go home. Somebody's still missing me. But he, he departed and he began to proclaim it in the capitalist. Well, somebody said, well, what is the capitalist? The capitalists are the ten surrounding cities. So let me put it to you like this. Jesus told them to go to your physical address. But that wasn't good enough for him. He went to Canton. He left Canton and went to Flora. He left Flora and went to Glustack. Left Glustack and went to Madison. He left Madison and went to Ridgeland. He left Ridgeland and went to Jackson. He left Jackson and went to Flowood. He left Flowood and went to Byram. He left Byram and went to Brandon. He left Brandon and went uh, uh, to Flowood. Uh, in other words, he went to the surrounding cities uh, and told them what the Lord had done in his life. <clears throat> I'm through with your new Bethel, uh, but the Lord tell us in his word uh, that we ought to be willing uh, to tell somebody uh, about the goodness of, Lord, of God. Uh, when I look over in my Bible, uh, what I do see is uh, in Psalms 107 verse 2, uh, he says, let the redeemer uh, of the Lord say so. Uh, in Psalms 34 verse 1 through 3, uh, he said, I will bless the Lord uh, at all times, uh, and his praises uh, shall continually be in my mouth. Uh, my soul uh, shall make a boast in the Lord. Uh, the humble shall hear thereof uh, and be glad. Uh, oh, uh, magnify the Lord with me. Uh, and let us exalt his name together. Uh, Psalms 103 verse 1 says, uh, Bless the Lord. Uh, 
oh my soul uh, and all that is within me uh, bless his holy name uh, he's all right uh, Psalms 150 uh, verse 6 says uh, let everything uh, that has breath uh, praise ye the Lord uh, praise the Lord uh, Psalms 100 say uh, brother Tim Travis already read it uh, it said make a joyful noise uh, unto the Lord uh, all ye land uh, come before his presence with singing uh, know ye uh, that the Lord is God uh, it is he that have made us uh, and not we ourselves uh, we are his people uh, and the sheep of his pasture enter uh, into his gates uh, with thanksgiving uh, into his court with praise uh, be thankful uh, unto him uh, he's all right be thankful unto him uh, and bless his name. Uh, here's why you ought to do it. Uh, for the Lord is good. Uh, his mercy is everlasting. Uh, his truth endures to all generation. Uh, don't know how you feel about it, uh, but I'm so glad I got something uh, worth telling. Uh, I can tell them uh, that I know a man from Galilee. Uh, if you're in sin, he will set you free. I know a man that came through 42 generations, got off in Bethlehem of Judea, stayed around for 33 years. I can tell them that one Friday on a hill called Calvary, you know what he did in New Bethel. I love to tell them he died. He died. He died, he died, but that's not how the story ends. I want you to know I don't end my story right there, but I'll be sure to tell them they put him in a bar of tune. He stayed right there all night Friday night, all day and all night Saturday, but how many know right early, 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 early Sunday morning uh, he got up from the grave uh, not with some power but with all power he's all right do you know he's all right he's all right I know he's all right you ought to tell them uh, he's a burden barrier a heavy load carrier you ought to tell them uh, he's a doctor in a sick room uh, lawyer in a courtroom uh, way out of nowhere uh, a chill wiper uh, a midnight rider you ought to tell them uh, that he walks with me uh, he talks with me uh, he holds my hand uh, when the storm of life are raging uh, you ought to tell them uh, he's my daddy uh, he's my mother since they've been gone uh, you ought to tell them uh, he's all right he's all right uh, you ought to tell them uh, don't be ashamed to tell them uh, he walks with me uh, he talks with me uh, he rocks me uh, when i get weary uh, he's all right uh, do you know he's all right uh, if they don't know who you're talking about uh, tell them his name is jesus uh, adam's redeemer abel's vindicator noah's ark uh, his name is jesus Jesus, uh, tell him who he is. Uh, his name is Jesus. Uh, Moses, Bush on fire. David, music. Uh, Solomon, wisdom. Uh, Ezekiel, wheel. Uh, in the middle of a wheel. Uh, Daniel, stone. Uh, hewn out of the mountain. Uh, tell him he's Matthew, king. Uh, Mark, suffering servant. Uh, Luke, great physician. Uh, John, word made flesh. Uh, Acts coming out of the Holy Ghost. Uh, if you don't know him by those names, uh, tell him he's a doctor in a sick room. Uh, way out of nowhere. Bright and morning star. Lily of the violin. Rose of Sharon. Uh, he's all right. Uh, he's all right. Uh, be sure to tell them uh, what happened uh, when he saved your soul. Uh, don't know about you, uh, but I told you earlier, uh, he's all right. Uh, one Monday evening uh, when the sun was sinking low uh, didn't have a God on my side uh, but I heard the preacher say uh, the day you hear my voice uh, 
Harden not your heart. Right now is the acceptable time. You know what I did. I got up and came down this aisle. I gave Dr. Harris my hand. Gave God my heart. Ever since that day, I've been rising. I've been falling. But do you know I got joy? Joy. Joy. Unspeakable joy. Tell somebody I've been through a lot, but out of all I've been through, I still got my joy. I still got it. Do you have that joy? You ought to say thank you. Thank you. You ought to shout glory. Hallelujah. Since I laid my burdens down, I feel better. So much better. He's all right. He's all right. Do you know he's all right? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. In the able, in the able, won't he heal a sing sick soul? He's all right. He's all right. He's all right. I know he's all right. He's all right. You ought to tell somebody that I have found a Savior. And he, sweet I know, I have found a Savior. And he, sweet I know. The doors of the church open. Candidate for baptism. By letter, by Christian experience, if you don't have a story to tell, it may be that you haven't met Jesus. Because once you meet Jesus, you have a story to tell. I want to invite you to come get your story this morning. Accepting members by candidate for baptism. By letter, by Christian experience, let us stand. Won't you trust him? It may be that you might be a member of the church, but you're not saved. You can come now. Won't you come? Won't you trust him? We're waiting on you. Candidate for baptism by letter, by Christian experience. You may be out of fellowship. You can come. You may need to be restored. He'll make your life brand new. Won't you trust him? Will there be one? Today can be your day. If you're watching us virtually, I say call 601-859-2829. You'll be given instructions what it is that you need to do. While you have time, while the blood is still running warm in your vein, you ought to trust him. You ought to come. Won't you come? Amen. You may be seated.
Amen. Amen. Let the heart say amen. At this time, let us turn our attention to the Lord's Supper. Amen. The Bible teaches us that Jesus met with his disciples before he was crucified. He had the Lord's Supper with them. The Bible teaches us that we are to uh, do this until the Lord come again. We're to zern, see his body hanging on a cross in our place. We are to see him, the blood being shed, his body being broken for us. We are to see that and know that it should have been us, but he took our place. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to say thank you. Thank you, Father God, for what our ears have heard, what our eyes have seen, but most of all, what our hearts have felt. Father God, we pray right now that you will look on us. Heavenly Father, we ask that you look on us with eyes of mercy, realizing that if you looked on us with eyes of anger, you would be justified in doing so. For we have fallen short of your word. But Lord, we read in your word that if we confess our sins before thee, that you are faithful and just to forgive. Father God, we come this morning saying we're sorry. Asking if you will, dear God, please forgive us for all of our sins, all of our unrighteousness. Lord, that we'll be able to partake of the Lord's Supper with a clear conscience, knowing that we've been forgiven. Father God, because you told us in your word that we're to examine ourselves. And if we examine ourselves and see that we're unworthy, and if we eat it and drink it unworthy, we eat it and drink it damnation to ourselves. Father God, we're asking that you forgive us. Cleanse us of all of our unrighteousness. Heavenly Father, and we'll be careful to give you all of the praise, glory, and honor that's due you. Now we ask that you would bless this bread that represents your body, which was broken for us. Bless this fruit of the vine, which represents your blood, which was shed for us. We say in your son Jesus' name, amen. The bread represents the body of our Lord which was broken for us. Let us all eat together. The fruit of the vine represents the blood of our Lord which was shed for us. Let us all drink together. After they had partaken of the Lord's Supper, the scripture teaches us that they sung a hymn and went out to the Mount of Olives. At this time, we're going to ask that you would stand for the benediction. We're going to ask uh, our praise team to furnish us with music, and then the ushers will usher you out beginning at the, the rear. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with us now, henceforth, and forevermore. Let us all sing together. Oh. 